Hey guys, so we had the iPhone event yesterday and Apple unveiled their new iPhone 5S and iPhone 5C. Now, I don't want to talk too much about the iPhone 5C because, you know, that kind of disappointed me. Basically, it's last gen hardware, so it's an iPhone 5 that you can change the color of and it's in plastic. That's all fine, but they didn't get the price point right for me. I thought the iPhone 5C was going to be a lot cheaper. It comes in in the UK around £430. That is way too expensive for what is essentially an iPhone 5. I thought they were at least going to make it 200 to 300, 200 to 250 pounds cheaper than the iPhone 5S, and that didn't happen. So I'm just going to leave the 5C over there because I don't want to talk about it. But let's go ahead and talk about the 5S, which is obviously their new flagship device. Let's see what they've done to it. So let's just go through here. I'm on the apple.com website. And in terms of the overall design, they haven't changed much. It's basically the same shape as the iPhone 5. It's got the same screen. It's still a retina display. They haven't bumped up the resolution either. So that's a few things to take account of. And they have actually changed the colors you can get. And you can see here, it now comes in three colors. You can see it doesn't actually come in black anymore. This bottom color is space gray, they called it. We've got silver and we've got this gold, which is actually more of a champagne color. I'm glad it's more of a champagne color rather than an actual like bling gold because that would just look terrible. So there's three colors you can get this in. It's not actually available yet. I think it's coming out in a few weeks time. You can pre-order it on the 13th. Now you can see this here and they're making a big deal about the home button with this ring around it. And that's because the iPhone 5S's standout feature is this touch id and basically what that is to me and you is a fingerprint scanner and this is actually quite cool i was actually quite impressed with how well this worked and just how like speedy it was as well you know if apple generally does something they do generally do it right let's just forget about apple maps because that was the exception but yeah i've seen some videos of this and it does work so basically you put your thumb or your finger on the home button and it will unlock your device now it's not just for unlocking you can also use it as a normal password so when you pay for apps you can just scan your fingerprint and it will buy the app so you don't have to put in a passcode or you know anything like that so that's quite cool it does actually work pretty quickly and it needed to because if it was slow it would just be crap but um yeah, this is pretty much the standout feature of the iPhone 5S. There's nothing else that's really crazy good. This is their biggest thing. And it is quite a big feature and it's kind of cool. I'm not sure how well it will work or if that many people will use it. We, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But nonetheless, it has a fingerprint scanner. It's going to be better for your security. Kind of makes me think that if somebody steals your iPhone though, they might kind of lop off a finger and try and use it to unlock the iPhone. I don't know. That may that may happen. Yeah, it could easily happen. So be careful. Let's move on though. And we'll move on to the processor. And you can see here it's got the A7 chip. Now we don't actually know that much about the A7 chip. They didn't tell us about the clock rate. They didn't even tell us how much RAM this thing has. I hate the way Apple doesn't tell you anything about the internals. What they did tell us is it's a 64-bit smartphone. So the iOS 7 on the iPhone 5S is 64-bit. That's kind of a big deal. It's the first time it's happened Basically, what this means to the end user is it's going to give you better performance. It's going to be faster. It's going to be able to handle graphics better and things like that. Nobody's going to pick it up. and The average user isn't going to pick this up and go, damn, this is what 64 bits all about. You know, they're just not going to do that. Nobody's really going to know what that is, but it is kind of cool. It is pretty important. That does mean that apps do need to support 64 bit. If you're on the iPhone 5S, I think they do still support 32-bit, of course, as well. So you don't need to actually re-encode it. But you will need to kind of redevelop your app if you want it to take advantage of the 64-bit. And they had to re redo all of iOS 7 on the uh, on the uh, 5S and the apps and the core Apple apps on the 5S as well. But um, yeah, pretty good improvement there from Apple. You can see here, if we scroll down a little bit more, 64-bit, it's got two times the power of the previous model, the A6, and two times the GPU performance. Two times the GPU performance is pretty impressive. We know iOS devices have a beast of a GPU all the time. So this is going to be even better. And don't forget, they didn't bump up that resolution. So games are going to be very smooth on the iPhone 5S. They also included this M7 coprocessor and... This basically takes control of and listens to all of the sensors on the iPhone, like the gyroscope and proximity sensors. And it's going to make them more accurate and you're going to be able to do more stuff with them. Google Plus, uh, Google Plus, um, Nike Plus is releasing a new app that really integrates well or something. I don't actually know what the improvements are going to be, but there are improvements. So we'll have to wait and see. 
Moving on, the camera. So the camera, they didn't change the megapixel. It's still 8 megapixel, but what they did do is change the pixel size. We've gone, down, we've gone to 1.5 microns. That's going to be bigger pixels, so that means more light. That means better quality. And they've changed the aperture to 2.2 instead of 2.4. So in terms of the camera, you are going to get a better camera. It's now got a burst mode, which is actually pretty cool. I saw this in a video, and you hold it down, and it just takes pictures so quickly it looks it feels like a machine gun or something but it's pretty cool they've also got slow motion capture at 120 frames per second at 720p this also this always confuses me because it's 720p but the screen isn't actually 720p so you really don't get that benefit that is they need to bump up that resolution in my opinion at least to 720p but they haven't but nonetheless there is also some other stuff it doesn't have optical image stabilization but it does have software stabilization the camera is going to be good. The camera is always good on iPhones, and this one will still be good. It'll have excellent color reproduction, excellent saturation, and all that sort of stuff. But, yeah, it's uh, it's a camera, so we'll move on. Um, you can see here again, FaceTime HD. Again, FaceTime HD, but yet the iPhone screen isn't HD, so they need to do something about that. It's just confusing as hell to me. That's pretty much it. It's got faster wireless. It supports more LTE bands, all, all that kind of normal stuff. iOS 7, obviously. I don't want to get into too much about the iOS 7 stuff. But, yeah, that's pretty much all it is, guys, with the iPhone 5S. It's improved the processor. The standout feature is the Touch ID. So I kind of want to make this into a discussion video, guys. I want to know what you think about this, what your impressions of the iPhone are. If you're an Android user, does it make you jealous? If you're an iPhone 5 user, do you think you need to upgrade or are you kind of happy with your iPhone 5? Let me know what you guys think. Peace out.